Hi Saints and welcome back to Supernatural by Design. My name is Jared. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the recent downfall of a Hamas leader and how this parallels a very unique connection from 1948. Oh yes. In addition, we're also going to cover the ninth of Av. Something very significant is getting ready to happen. Thirdly, we're going to see where this is all headed. What is coming down the road in Bible prophecy? And so that is our show. But let us first begin with a Bible verse. This one comes from Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. Oh, yes. What an incredible God who we can trust in, especially in times like these. What do I mean by that? Well, the world is on the brink of going nuclear. But rest assured, because at the moment of sudden destruction, that is when the rapture happens. And it's promises like those by God that we can trust in. Hence, Jeremiah 17, 7. We serve an amazing God and he loves us very much. Never lose sight of that. Never lose sight. Now, let's begin. As stated earlier in the video, we're going to break this video into three separate topics. In our first section, we're going to see a fascinating pattern that ties the current war that Israel's in to 1948. It's profound, saints. I can't... Oh, it's amazing. Then, we're going to take a look at the 9th of Av of this year by comparing it to the 9th of Av... 70 AD. You'll see why here in a little bit. And I mean specifically through God's celestial signs. And provided these two sections, we will see in section three where this is all headed and what it means with regards to the rapture. Maybe kind of think of it as a conclusion. But nonetheless, let us go ahead now and start in section one, which is our 1948 pattern. But first, I need you to see this. And so I've created a timeline called Milestones of Bible Prophecy. We're going to place dates on this and you'll see something here supernatural by design. As there is no other way to explain what we're about to discuss. So here, let me set this up. On 514 of 1948, Israel was established as a state. Well, one day later, Israel would begin their war of independence. As the Arab League, a group of Islamic nations would come against Israel on 515 of 1948. Now, this war would last nine months, three weeks, and two days. At the culmination of the raising of the ink flag, which you can see from the picture provided. Now, it states here underneath this picture, it says that the ink flag marked the end of the war. Because the raising of this flag occurred on March 10th, of 1949. Now, you may have heard about this. However, for myself, this was brand new. So, I wanted to investigate a little bit further. And I emailed a dear brother in Christ, Brother Joseph, who is a Messianic Jew and university professor in biblical theology. And so, I would like to read his email response when I asked him the question, what is the significance of the ink flag? And this was his response. Dear brother, the ink flag was a makeshift effort to create a flag using blue ink. They found a white sheet and dyed it blue with two broad lines. It worked for the most part. It was hoisted once the last police station in Iliad was captured and marked the end of the last operation to seize control of the partitioned land. The memory of the flag is still with Israelis today, never forgotten. So you see, this ink flag was extremely profound. However, I love how Brother Joseph provides a parallel that would be relevant for me to understand the significance of this event. And so he goes on to state, I suppose it's like the flag that flew over Baltimore Harbor during the War of 1812. The Star Spangled Banner Yet Waves. Isn't that profound? Does this help? 
Yes, it does, Brother Joseph. Thank you for your response. And I hope it helps you if you've never heard of this ink flag. But nonetheless, coming back to our timeline. From May 15th of 1948 to March 10th of 1949 was nine months, three weeks, and two days. Nine months, three weeks, and two days. Remember that timestamp. Now think of this as a milestone. This was a milestone for Israel. And I mean that in the context of Bible prophecy. Now, here is what is so fascinating. Supernatural by design. And how it is a pattern, even here in modern times. Check this out. So, according to this Al Jazeera article, one of the senior commanders of Hezbollah was taken out on the 30th of July. And then within a couple of hours, yet in the wee early morning hours of the 31st, the political leader of Hamas was taken out. And so moving that information to this slide, we have 730 for the senior military commander of Hezbollah, as well as the political leader for Hamas. On 731. Noting the 11 date aspect of 731, as mentioned in the previous video, and if you remember, context is key, and so this 11 is connected to judgment. And so this 1 2 combo punch began on the 30th, but also includes the 31st. Now I know I'm repeating these dates. But these dates will be extremely significant here in just a moment. Now, saints, check this out. The war with Hamas began on October 7th of 2023. Well, I should say Hamas attacked Israel on 10-7. Technically, it was on 10-8 that Benjamin Netanyahu declared war on Hamas. That will be significant here in just a second but noted on the timeline. But check this out. How does this relate to 1948? Remembering the time of nine months, three weeks, and two days. Saints, did you know that from October 7th to July 30th of 2024 was nine months, three weeks, and two days? The exact same month, week, and day count is 1948. What are the odds of that? Israel declared war on Hamas the very next day on the 8th. Even so, nine months and three weeks and two days from that date is 731. Now, we all talk about the War of Independence for Israel as being significant for Bible prophecy. I hope this really lends credence to why the October 7th Phase 2 of World War III is significant. Maybe think of it like this. If the ink flag is a milestone marking the end of Israel's independence war, then the 30th or the 31st, whichever you want to go with, is also a milestone. And because it's a milestone, it's why in Section 2, and section three are dedicated to talk about what occurs after this milestone. However, I do have one more pattern that I must show you. It's a celestial one, but relatively demonstrates the exact same concept of start to milestone celestially. However, to lay the groundwork for this pattern, I'm actually going to play a clip from a video released eight days prior to October 7th of 2023, titled, Everything As You Know Is About To Change. World War III, The October War, War Is Coming. Now, this clip is five minutes long. However, again, we'll help lay the groundwork for the rest of this video. Check this out. Highlighting God's profound relationship with using Venus inside the constellation of Leo to not only mark World War I, World War II, and our Day of Atonement War in 2020, we are now going to see an extension to this pattern 
that is profound and ties each one of these celestial events of Venus and Leo to a very specific solar eclipse every single time and the very foundation of this pattern proving that World War III is in October. Check this out saints. How we're going to approach this is that we're going to suggest that the summer solstice eclipse because it was on the summer solstice as profound as pointing to war and Venus being in Taurus removing the inner part of our pattern the day of atonement war and the hybrid eclipse that this eclipse of 2020 is also pointing to World War III and not just the day of atonement war of 2020 hence why we removed it why because these two celestial signs are pattern unto themselves but in order to appreciate this pattern that God has revealed we need to call out this three year gap between our summer solstice eclipse with Venus and Taurus and then three years later when Venus goes into Leo in October marking World War III you'll see why here in a second let's turn to this side because Saints incredibly enough three years previous to when Venus was in Leo marking the start of World War I on 428 of 1911 at the time of a total eclipse Venus was in Taurus isn't that incredible here let's check this out in Stellarium so you can see it you see there's the eclipse it's in Aries but look to the left Venus is in Taurus so one thing we can take away here is that war doesn't necessarily have to take place on the Day of Atonement but there is this three-year gap that God marks with a total solar eclipse or just a solar eclipse and if Venus is in Taurus three years later war breaks out now if this is truly a consistent pattern we should see this during World War II three years earlier when did World War II start 1939 so in 1936 is there a solar eclipse in which Venus is in Taurus well let's check that out on 619 of 1936 there's our eclipse and there's Venus once again in Taurus isn't God incredible this to me truly demonstrates that the heavens declare the glory of God wow it's fascinating God is fascinating and so it really begs the question because our summer solstice eclipse in 2020 Venus being in Taurus at the moment of the eclipse Saints two instances in a row World War One and World War Two have followed the same exact pattern God's celestial signs are supernatural by design I literally can't overstate that this moves beyond coincidence as we now have two variables locking in our Venus and Leo war connection that itself Venus being in Leo but also that three years previous a necessary condition is that at the time of a solar eclipse if Venus is in Taurus then war will break out three years later because think about it without the solar eclipse aspect Venus goes into Leo twice a year so someone might say well what are you trying to say war will break out twice a year every time Venus is in Leo no the set condition is that at a time of a solar eclipse if Venus is in Taurus war is coming following the World War One World War Two pattern but even taking a step back with our Day of Atonement pattern our 2020 pattern is the exact same model as our 2023 pattern at the time of the eclipse Venus is in Taurus and so when Venus comes back to Leo war which is what we're getting ready to enter into wasn't that fascinating I will leave a link to this video in the description I highly encourage you to check it out it's about 40 minutes long however here on this timeline this is why I wanted you to watch that so as we discussed in that video that when Venus enters into Leo 
World War III. And I should clarify, phase two of World War III. Phase one was the Ukraine invasion. This particular video demonstrated that there was a celestial pattern to the world wars. In addition, we'll see it's paramount to the 9th of Av in 70 AD. That's why I had you watch it as well. But nonetheless, here on this timeline, Venus was in Leo on the day that Hamas attacked Israel, as well as the very next day when Israel declared war. Now, in between these days, this video went viral showing the Hamas leader offering prayers and celebrating Hamas's attack. All right, so Venus was in Leo at that time. Now I have a video clip from Stellarium that I want to show you. And so here it is. Here's Venus in Leo in October, starting World War III, Phase Two. And so all the while, while Venus is beginning to exit out of Leo, we're seeing a whole bunch of news headlines about Gaza and Israel, Hezbollah launching attacks from southern Lebanon, as well as the Houthis launching attacks. Or if we recall, the largest air bombardment by Iran and all the while, Venus is traversing through the constellations until we get to Venus makes its approach again into Leo. And guess when? On 7, 30, and 31. Coming back to our timeline. That means that when Venus was first in Leo, marking phase two of World War III, the main co-conspirator of this Hamas attack was celebrating the first time Venus was in Leo. But as Venus went all the way around the constellations, by the time it makes its way back to Leo, he's taken out, marking the start and the milestone. But this time from a heavenly perspective. And so moreover, we have celestial signs confirming the start of World War III plus the milestone. We have the 1948, nine months, three weeks, and two days marking the same exact pattern. May God be given the glory. His sovereignty reigns supreme, folks. I hope you realize that these patterns aren't there just because God likes patterns. God has placed these patterns so that we would discover them, so that we would know that he's ultimately in control. These two patterns is just one extension of that. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and go into section two and talk about the ninth of Av that's coming up for this year. But I guess for a little bit of background, why the ninth of Av is significant? Well, this pattern originates all the way back in the Bible in Numbers chapter 13, during the time of Moses, after the Exodus, but before they reached the promised land. And so for a little bit of a historical context, let me paint the picture for you about what took place and how the ninth of Av pattern was established. So God had promised Israel the promised land. And so by the time that Israel gets approximately to the land, Moses sends out 12 spies to go scout the land. However, when all 12 came back, 10 gave a negative report because there was Nephilim in the land. You know, the same ones mentioned in Genesis chapter six, Moreover, there were giants in the land, but it scared them, it worried them, it concerned them. And so they gave a bad report. They said, hey, I don't think we can go in there. And yet forgetting that God promised that that would be their land. Anyways, Joshua and Caleb would be the two spies that were saying, hey, no, we can take these guys. However, it's the fact that 10 came back with a negative report. However, the Israelite community believed the majority's conclusions. And this event marked the first ninth of Av, also known as Tisha B'av, means the exact same thing. And so how this comes out in a pattern later throughout history is the destruction of the first temple. The first Jewish temple was on the ninth of Av, as well as the second Jewish temple also on the ninth of Av. And so just as the 10 spies came back with a negative report, God was giving a negative report of Israel, hence the destruction of the temples. But it's interesting and fascinating to note here that these two destructions of the Holy Temple were hundreds of years apart by two different kingdoms 
the Romans and the Babylonians. And yet without cooperating behind the scenes, these two nations destroy the two Jewish temples exactly on the same day, the 9th of Av. Now, if you want some more background information on the 9th of Av, I will place a link to Jonathan Kahn's video on the 9th of Av mystery in the description. Definitely check it out if you want some more background details. Now, with all that being said, I would like to pivot this conversation towards the 9th of Av being relevant to this year of 2024, which for this year is August 12th and August 13th. However, here's what's fascinating. We discovered in a previous video called All About Israel, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out, but pulling up this slide from that video. You see, the reason why I began with that celestial sign pattern of the three-year gap marking World War I, World War II, and World War III, it turns out, now switching to this slide, that the ninth of all that marked the destruction of Jerusalem followed the same celestial pattern with an eclipse, and then three years later, Venus is in Leo. And so the connection point is God's celestial signs to all four events. And even more so, the celestial signs aspect than the ninth of Av pattern. In fact, stressing that point. Because you see, World War I and World War II, when they started, pulling up these two screenshots, from Hebkow, did not land on the 9th of Av, nor did our October 7th date, marking World War III. And so again, it's the celestial signs that underscore this pattern. God is precise in his patternship. But moving this forward, how does this pertain to right now, to the 9th of Av this year, 812 and 813? Well, pulling up a video from Stellarium and starting where we left off from 730. As Venus traverses through the constellation of Leo, it is in the middle of Leo on August 12th and August 13th. Imagine the same exact concept as the 9th of Av in 70 AD. Pinpoint that date. Now, how this pertains to section 1 is that since we have just crossed a milestone we're in new territory. I don't believe the timing is coincidental. And placement of the ninth of Av, since all three events link Venus and Leo, notwithstanding an example in 70 AD of Venus being in Leo connected to the ninth of Av. But moreover, that's the celestial connection. Now, looking forward, let's tie the ninth of Av to an event. Now, kind of as a sneak peek to section three, but as we've seen in the Born on Eclipse video, the leader of Israel and Iran, both born on eclipses and also contained within their names are references to the characters out of the story of Esther. This celestial and name detail is supernatural by design. Now, consider that in context of this with the ninth of Av. It turns out, and reporting by the Jerusalem Post that Iran plans to attack Israel on the 9th of Av and thereby escalating the current conflict. But again, should that be a surprise? No, not at all. As we've seen, World War I and World War II and the celestial pattern that underscored them, the Holy Spirit brought that to the surface in such a way to predict that World War III would begin in October or I should say the celestial component of that pattern. And moreover, we should expect to see escalation. And the fact that Iran is now stepping more into the forefront, turning to this side, World War III is also connected to the story of Esther. And now turn to this side, the exact same celestial signs that occurred when Esther was crowned queen are occurring this year, making Iran a very significant country to watch. Why? Because the story of Esther takes place in modern day Iran. This is why God has marked the leaders of Israel and Iran with solar eclipses. Now, I'm just skimming over a lot of this stuff here, but if you're curious about this Esther stuff, watch these two videos, Born on Eclipse and Esther in 2024. 
Nonetheless, all those videos will be in the description. Check out their links. But to really bring this ninth of off pattern to a head, a conclusion of sorts, is that the ninth of off begins a new leg of this pattern, continuing it on, and even to that point that something specific happens on that day. Doesn't have to, but we shall see. But nonetheless, because the milestone ended in the constellation of Leo, and then it's handing it off to begin this continued pattern on the ninth of Av, because all of this is happening within the constellation of Leo. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me try to put it in a different light. So I used to run track and field in college. Shout out to the University of Missouri in Columbia. Go Tigers. Anyways, we had sprint relay teams. Anyways, you had to hand the baton off within a 20 meter zone. You did it before that, disqualified. Did it after that, disqualified. And so what I'm trying to say is that because Venus comes in the Leo with the milestone, it's handing off the baton before it exits out of Leo to this new phase that begins on the ninth of Av. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. But nonetheless, that's just a metaphor to explain that now we're entering a new chapter in which Iran will be coming more and more to the forefront. That's how sections one and sections two connect and pivot on the ninth of Av, which to that point leads me into section three. Where is this all going? And what's next on the prophecy horizon? I think it's a very valid question. I mean, is this pattern pointing to the Ezekiel 38, 39 Gog and Magog invasion of Israel? Or is it possibly pointing to the Psalm 83 war? Maybe it's a combination or maybe it's a different passage. And so I would like to say that this particular video opens up this dialogue. And don't worry, we're going to come back to how the pattern fits into what's coming down the pipeline in Bible prophecy. However, with regards to Ezekiel 38, Gog and Magog, Psalm 83, if we're being honest, we know that these wars take place, but the Bible isn't specific on when they take place. However, we can all see that these alliances are definitely forming there. They're coming to fruition. But again, the Bible isn't specific on when they take place. I mean, even for example, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, there are a handful of verses that seem to indicate it happens early on, maybe even before Daniel's 70th week starts. But then on the flip side, there are some really good verses that point to the end of Daniel's 70th week and are very valid. But moreover, we're not really told exactly when Ezekiel 38 and 39 take place, at least directly. You can make some arguments indirectly. And then we also have another problem. We have countries that are in current headlines that are stirring the pot of tension, like China, North Korea, and a few others that are sable rattling with nuclear weapons. And yet they aren't mentioned in Ezekiel 38 or Psalm 83. And so moreover, is there any place in scripture that can help us sort out the order of these events? Well, I believe so. Well, at least what comes first, and that's key. And so if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 24, verses six through nine, because it's here that Jesus gives us a key word. Let's read it. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not alarmed. Let's all take that part in real quick. See that you're not alarmed. Let's continue. For those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. Verse 7. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. Then they will hand you over to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And then Jesus even goes on to state in verse 10. And at that time, many will fall away. 
and they will betray one another and hate one another. And so what is key to pay attention to in this passage here? Well, there are many things, but let's break this out. And so point number one, and that is what is key to pay attention to in this passage is that Jesus tells us a time. He says, merely the beginning of birth pains. You see, when nation rises against nation and kingdom against kingdom, that is an umbrella statement, inclusive of all nations, or at least uh, enough that Jesus doesn't get specific because it's a worldwide event, a world war. And it's this event, this world war, that precedes Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83. Not only because Jesus gives us the timestamp of that, this is the start, this is the beginning, but he also links it to birth pains, which, turn to this slide, is also what the Apostle Paul ties to the rapture as well. Birth pains, labor pains. I mean, understandably, the Apostle Paul would have been familiar with Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83, and yet he doesn't reference those being linked to the rapture. He uniquely ties birth pains. And so I say all that to say this, coming back to Matthew chapter 24, Jesus tells us that it's World War III that kicks off the tribulation. Now, to be fair, I will admit this is not a common understanding viewpoint of the order of end time events. Although I did bring up verse 10 for a very key point. When Jesus tells us that, and at that time many will fall away, if we turn to 2 Thessalonians, that's exactly what Paul talks about right before the revealing of the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the lawless one, giving even more credence that what Jesus is talking about in conjunction with Paul, tells us that World War III not only brings about the rapture and tribulation, aka Daniel's 70th week, but it also brings about the rise of the Antichrist. And then from there, Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83. Now, there is definitely a whole lot more we can go through and study of this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 24. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up and how the patterns that we've discussed in section one and section two play a role in prophecy on the horizon, because these patterns aren't staring in the direction that most assume, Ezekiel 38 and Psalm 83. And so now let's talk about those celestial patterns and what they are pointing to. In fact, from a 5,000 foot view, World War III. And so moving our pattern onto this side and cumulatively having the milestone and the transition point equaling to Iran versus Israel or Israel versus Iran, however you want to pair those. But nonetheless, we'll call it the trigger point to something larger. And that is this. Now, we're going to come back to this, but pulling up this side, because you see, it occurred to me, whether it was the Holy Spirit or something profound clipped, that the 4-8-2024 eclipse is a lot more significant than meets the eye. Here, let me explain. You see, on the left side, we have this Amos Code, which is all about the judgment that's coming to America via Russia and China. And we've been covering this for several years now. However, in presenting this side of the eclipse, we've always kept it as something over here to the left. Independent is what I mean. And conversely, on the right side, where it says the Haman Code. And now turn to this side real quick to explain that. Because this eclipse took place in the constellation of Pisces, as you can see here in the screenshot from Stellarium, now turn to this slide. According to Jewish traditions, the mitzvah, one of Israel's religious texts, state that the constellation of Pisces is associated with 
Haman from the story of Esther. As Haman conceived his plot when the sun was in that constellation. And so, moreover, coming back to our 480 clips, on one hand, it's tied to the story of Esther. And isn't that funny? Because we've seen many examples of that throughout this video. However, 48, the date of the eclipse, is also Nisan 1. And so, moreover, this eclipse was pointing to a conflict between Israel and Iran. And yet, presenting the information as if it was separate from the Amos Code side. However, in the advent of this pattern that we're discussing in today's video, the milestone, this is what clicked. This is what I believe the Holy Spirit made profoundly as unique detail. You see, these two interpretations, the Amos Code and the Haman Code, are actually linked. They're linked to each other. You see, if I place Iran right here on top of the Haman Code and Russia and China above the Amos Code, what has been a fascinating development to see unfold is that Russia, China, and Iran are all uniquely connected to each other. Here, and pulling up this article. Even earlier this year, China, Russia, and Iran had joint military drills. As mentioned in this Voices of America article, China, Russia, Iran, maritime drills send signal to West. Now, coming back to our eclipse slide, and then we'll place this information onto our pattern slide. But you see, the conflict that ensues between Iran and Israel will draw in America. And that, in turn, will draw in Russia and China against the U.S. So do you see how this eclipse paints that picture? Now, let's add those details onto our slide. And so, we have Iran and Israel. Trigger point, aka the Haman Code part of the eclipse, draws in America, which draws in Russia and China against America, the Amos Code part of the eclipse. And it's at this point when it goes nuclear and the moment of the rapture. Now, does that make sense? I hope so. All right. Let me show you in scripture. Okay, well, wait a second. Actually, I can't show you in scripture. There isn't a passage that says that China and Russia will come against the U.S. and use nuclear weapons, which is the moment of the rapture. I mean, one could make an argument, turn to this side, that Daniel 7.4 and 7.5 is talking about Russia attacking the U.S. and the U.K., but still, that's not the exact same thing as... China and Russia coming against the U.S., even though I would say these two events are linked to each other in some shape, form, or fashion. But either way, as far as a verse outlining China and Russia coming against the U.S., specifically, I can't do that. But let me ask you this question. Let's say that is the scenario, and that brings about the sudden destruction. Does, that, does this scenario fall outside of Scripture? Well, from a technical sense, no but still no scripture to point to. Is that a problem? Well, maybe, or maybe not. In fact, let me just ask this question. Can God reveal to each one of us prophecy, details about prophecy that are in line with prophecy in his word? Well, the irony is that there's actually scriptural examples of that. In fact, let me turn to Luke chapter 2, Verses 25 and 26. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now what's interesting, in this story, he's walking with the prophetess Anna. Now Anna could have easily asked Simeon, Hey, Simeon, listen, I know what you said about the Holy Spirit, but do you have a verse for that? Well, of course, Simeon wouldn't have had a verse to point to. But is what the Holy Spirit revealed to him outside of Scripture? No. In fact, it falls in line with Scripture. The Holy Spirit just gave him a personal revelation, which 
is not uncommon in the Bible. In fact, here's even another example, which comes from Acts chapter 21, verses 11 through 31. Now, I'm going to let you go read it for yourself. Please do. But here in this example, the Apostle Paul is given a prophecy and the ones giving the prophecy didn't have a scripture to point to. Paul could have easily asked them, hey, do you have a scripture for that? But no, you come to find out that Paul's response was he believed what they were saying. But my whole point is that the Holy Spirit can reveal things to each one of us, prophecy details that fall in line with scripture and that you don't necessarily have a scripture to point to. No wonder the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21 tells us not to not only not utterly reject prophecies, but to examine and test all things. things. And I promise I'm coming to make a bigger point back at the pattern. But check this out. If we turn to what Jesus tells us in John chapter 16 and verse 13, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. Now, if that's simply just God's word, then what is it that the Holy Spirit is disclosing to come? And this is why in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, after Paul tells us one of the unique characteristics of a believer is love in chapter 13, well, he now says, hey, take that love, but also add this to it, which we find in verse 1. Pursue love, yet earnestly desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. You see, the Holy Spirit gives us additional details. Why? Well, one reason is to demonstrate the power of God for each one of us, not only personally, but as a witnessing tool. Or how about this in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. The apostle Peter even quotes the prophet Joel. And this was at the time of Pentecost. And this is what the apostle Peter says. Check this out. He says, and it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. And so I say all of that and brings me to my next point, coming back to our pattern. You see, Russia and China attacking the US and at the moment it goes nuclear is the rapture. Now, I don't have dreams and visions. Well, I had one vision, but it wasn't that. God, through thought, told me these things. However, and my next line of evidence of Russia and China against America, nuclear war rapture and all of that, check this out. Many brothers and sisters in Christ are having dreams and visions of that exact conclusion. That when Russia and China attack the US, the homeland with nuclear weapons, that's when the rapture occurs. And so to that point, I want you to check out this YouTube channel called Uplifted. Because our dear sister in Christ posts videos of dreams and visions by other believers and puts them on our YouTube channel. Now, let me just read some of the names of these visions and dreams that the Holy Spirit is giving to many, many believers. Check this out. Dream, World War III, America invaded by Russia. Or how about this one? Prophetic dream, America under attack and invasion. Or this one. Dream, America invaded by Russia, World War III, tribulation. Turn to this side just to show you how many there are. This one up here in the top left, prophetic dream, Russia and Chinese troops will invade America. Or this one, prophetic dream of USA being invaded by Russia and China. Or the one next to it, prophetic dream invasion by Chinese and Russian forces. Rapture dream confirmation, nuclear war and world war. Or this one, prophetic dream, Russia and China nuking America. Another one, prophetic dreams and visions, Russia and China will attack the U.S. 
Or finally, this one, prophetic dreams and visions, nuclear war and invasion are coming to America. And saints, these are not just onesie, twosie, prophecy, vision type things. Look, here's another slide. Check this out. Dream of nuclear war, Russia and China against America. You see what I'm saying? Or this one, dream, nuclear bombs attack America. In fact, here's a compilation of visions and dreams about nuclear bomb attacks and the rapture. Again, here's another one, prophetic dream, nuclear attack dream. Or this one, dreams of nuclear war and tsunami following the rapture. Dreams and visions being nuked by a nuclear bomb and the rapture. In fact, as I was reading this one, I noticed this other one on the top right about a mega tsunami. Remember Putin's weapon, the Poseidon? It can create a nuclear tsunami, which I believe hits New York City. But my whole point is that saints, many believers in Jesus Christ, are having Holy Spirit dreams and visions of a nuclear war rapture and specifically calling out Russia and China. And to even come to that conclusion is supernatural by design. Why? Because there's only one Holy Spirit. And so we shouldn't have different opinions or different conclusions about things. In fact, just as the Apostle Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. But I urge and entreat you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in perfect harmony and full agreement in what you say, and that there be no dissension or factions or divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in your common understanding and in your opinions and judgments. You see, I don't know those brothers and sisters in Christ who are having these dreams and visions, and they don't know me. But we have the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And revelation can only come by God himself. And so that's why it took us along the path of various Bible verses about the Holy Spirit and prophecy because I wanted to make this distinct point. Now, there is one unique detail that I did want to highlight that's common across all these dreams and visions. And that is that when the rapture happens, it's when it goes nuclear. But distinctly when those nukes hit America. Now, why do I want to make that distinction? Well, because there could be some tactical nukes used on the battlefield, military against military kind of thing. Maybe Israel and Hezbollah or Israel and Iran. Or at a bare minimum, just used somewhere. And not only that, but that all of this may occur during our window of when Venus is in Leo. But that's besides the point. But think of this tactical nuke as the icebreaker, almost normalizing the use. And it's at this point that it's just tick tock, tick tock before the nuclear weapons are brought out against America via China and Russia. And it's at that moment the rapture happens. And so coming back to our slide with Israel and Iran at the bottom, the milestone matching this 1948 pattern demonstrates that God is not only in the details, but all of this is leading to fulfill Bible prophecy. And so we laid a pretty solid foundation in section one and section two to arrive at this trigger point to make this point that the 48 eclipse with its two interpretations, one of the Amos Code, linking Russia and China against America with nuclear weapons, the moment of the rapture, as well as the Haman Code, pinpointing this Esther relationship that's repeating between Israel and Iran, that this solar eclipse is linking these events together, and moreover, that the nuclear war rapture is close as demonstrated not only by this eclipse, but other brothers and sisters in Christ having prophetic dreams. Only the Holy Spirit could have individuals who don't even know each other arrive at the same conclusion without a scripture to point to. And I believe 
The very next phase of escalation is right now. At a bare minimum between Venus being in Leo during this month, but also uniquely identifying that when this World War III that we're already in could really heat up is on the 9th of off. And again, not the rapture, but the next phase. But again, the next significant step is for America to get drawn into the conflict. When you see that happen, know how close we are. Wow. I can't wait to go home. And I know you can't either. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us. We look forward to meeting you. And finally, if you like this kind of content, definitely consider subscribing. Hit the like button, share, comment this video, all those things to help to support this channel, and I greatly appreciate that. With all that being said, this is where we're going to end this particular video. I pray that this video blesses you and encourages you to know just how close we are to the rapture of the body of Christ. And if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, let's get you saved right now. You see, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4, that Christ died for your sins, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day. And that all of this was predicted in his word, in the scriptures. And that if you believe that he died for your sins, then according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Why? For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Hence why in verse 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that can be you right now. Right now. He loves you. Oh, so much. And with that said, this is where we're going to end the video. I love y'all. Jesus loves y'all. God bless. And Maranatha, King Jesus.